And I want to open up talking about the Bengals because I feel like they've been by far the best competition that the Chiefs have had. They've been a much better right form. They've been a formidable foe uh, more than the Bills have been to the Chiefs. So I feel like the fact that they kind of went out there and just fumbled the bag with their secondary, they need to go out there, make some serious moves. And it's like, okay, we need to get either James Bradbury, Darius Slay, or go out there and sign CJ Garner Johnson, maybe overpay for someone a little bit and then focus on the secondary in their draft. And then you still need offensive line depth because your offensive line underperformed last year. Joe Burrow was still getting hit way too much last year. And people tried to say, it's like, yeah, Joe Burrow gets hit because he holds the ball too much. I'm like, really? He has the fastest balls out per second. Yes. I'm like, what are you saying? Like, Joe Burrow gets the ball out, sees the route, boom, gone. Like, he gets the ball out faster than anyone. It's like, stop trying to tell me that Joe Burrow's Ben Roethlisberger because he's not. And it's like, I admire that type of player, and Joe Burrow doesn't mind getting hit, and he's comfortable with it. And he does have some of that he'll hold on and extend a play. But overall, Joe Burrow gets it out faster than anyone else. So I don't know what it was last year, but you just couldn't figure out the offensive line when you signed all these big free agents. But you've got to figure it out this year because that's been the difference in all of these big games. It's like one or two seconds where Joe Burrow didn't have time to get the ball out to an open receiver because he had to throw it in the dirt. And then we kept falling behind the chains every time we'd get a holding call. We'd get a penalty versus the chiefs. And it's like, some of that's the refs controlling the tempo of the game, but some of that's you guys like, Hey, how about we get a drive where we stay ahead of the chains and not go to second and 14? Because if we weren't doing that versus the Chiefs or the Rams, you could have two Super Bowls right now if it wasn't for your fucking offensive line. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and that's why my objectives for this year for the Bengals, one of them is wrap that offensive line in bubble wrap. Because seriously, yeah. everyone got hurt. That entire offensive line got hurt immediately and didn't work with the chemistry. So I think this offseason, all of them should be working together far as building that chemistry and then keep them all healthy because i think yeah. it's not that their offensive line is bad it's that their offensive line isn't healthy they signed these guys they dropped a bag on everybody last year and they all got hurt so what are you going to do your offensive line was weak before all the players that you replaced them with got hurt you're left with a weak offensive line so for me i would keep them as healthy as possible maybe get them on the tom brady diet and that's my first objective second objective you got to replace jesse bates Jesse Bates is going to be a big loss for you guys. And then objective number three, and this is one maybe slightly premature, but also it's going to be a conversation, signing Joe Burrow. you got to re-sign Joe Burrow, which I think they'll be fine. I think they'll find that out. Um, maybe they addressed you know, drafting Jesse Bates' replacement in that first-round pick. But those are my three objectives for them. Keep the offensive line healthy, re-sign Joe Burrow, and replace Jesse Bates. Yeah, and I feel like, Von Bell, too, because I thought Von Bell played tremendous in some of their playoff games, and I thought he was definitely a difference maker. But I agree, but you really got to bolster up the secondary um, because you're well coached. um, And I feel like you have one of the best um, linebacking cores in the NFL. Um, You have definitely some ballers on the defensive end, but you just got to clear up that back end. So in the draft, I'm focusing on some O line depth, but I'm going for the baddest safety I can find. And then I'm drafting as many corners as possible. It's like any draft pick I don't know what to do with. We're drafting a corner because someone has to hit. And then if you can get a lockdown corner, replace Von Bell, get someone who's not. Eli Apple. Yeah. Like, it's kind of bad. Like, I don't want to. Like, he was one of the reasons why you lost to the Chiefs. It's like, I don't mind teams talking trash. But when it's just the others on the team. And then they don't show up and perform in that game. And they're the ones talking trash. It's like, it's not Joe Burrow going out there and calling it Burrow ahead. He's just kind of quietly confident. But like, you have some issues you need to address with your players because Joe Mixon has about two domestic uh, violence issues, um, criminal or civil actions. Um, Don't know the full details, but that's still a problem and it's still a problem in your locker room. So I would go out there and I feel like this is a good time to go out there and draft a young running back because it's not like Joe Mixon's one of these spring chickens out here. It's like, he's got some legs on He was on, he's in the same draft as Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. And Zeke and Zeke and uh, Aaron Jones. I mean, they're six years into the league now and Joe Mixon for most of his career, granted they've always had a pretty bad offensive line, 
I feel like it really wasn't until Joe Burrow that he really started to emerge as a top running back. Yeah. I feel like for the most part, it's been a lot of hype, but he's had a lot of, he's had a lot of off the field issues since going, joining in the league. That's why he fell so far in the draft. And then now he's got these different domestic assault cases this year. He's gotten two off season interactions this year. That's caused a distraction. Yeah. Then you have Jamar chase who's having some issues as well. So this is a Bengals team that I have a lot of faith in them because, you know, they've been drafting very well the last few years. They have Joe Burrow. They got uh, Jamar Chase. However, at the same time, they've lost a lot of key players. And if they keep players like Eli Apple talking trash without proving anything in the NFL, I'm not going to be able to support them. Yeah, and it's unfortunate to see, but you got to clean up that locker room too a little bit. But Overall, the offensive line has to come together, but I feel like Zach Taylor is someone who lives or dies um, by the Cincinnati Bengals. I feel like they built a great franchise, and you can definitely retool this team. I don't think it's unfixable by any stretch of the mother because the gap between them and the Buffalo Bills was so large when they played. It wasn't even close, and then the Bills just went out there, lost from Ada Edmonds, won't have Jordan Poyer this year, so it's like... You need to go out there and retool, though, because there's going to be teams like the Jaguars and some surprise teams like with Sean Payton going to the Broncos. It's like I get you still have Russ, but if you can get him to like normal with how electric and locked down their defense can be, I feel like you still have a lot of problems you can run into in the AFC, especially in your own division.